Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Security had three of the big platforms in the committee room and they were asking them questions and the meta representative just let the far left politicians have it hello everybody welcome to the canadian shield my name is sterling i'm your host the uh, tenant media has got the far left in canada all fired up about trying to censorship and all of the kinds of things that goes along with that by blaming the platforms and blaming the um, everybody but themselves for the problems that they can't reach the Canadian population with. And they, so as a result, they, they invited TikTok, Facebook, or Meta, and uh, YouTube. And I don't know why X wasn't represented. Maybe they didn't get an invite. Maybe they turned them down. I don't know the answer to that. Though I do know that X has a history of showing up, so they probably weren't invited. So MP Dancho went first with the six minutes that the conservatives get. And her, I think her questions are worth listening to. I mean, I didn't listen to all, I didn't put them all into this video, but she asked a couple of really important, well, you'll, you'll hear it. It's, it's important and it's shocking. Uh, we can start with Meta. What tangible efforts have been made to assist Facebook, for example, in these efforts to combat foreign interference? Uh, thank you for that question and through the chair we have not had any specific outreach from the government of Canada on this issue we do engage with government departments um, when we think there is information that's relevant and necessary to their mandates and we do brief them on our work including work res related to foreign interference uh, and so we have done the, those briefings uh, for government agencies in the last year or two, uh, but we have not had specific outreach from uh, government departments or government agencies on this issue in the last, uh, I would say, 12 to 24 months. And I thank you. So just to confirm, you have practically on your own accord reached out to brief government. Government in the last two years has not reached out or provided any tangible resources in the last two years regarding foreign interference. Is just confirming that? That's correct. Yes. We have three censorship bills, C-816, C-18, C-63. One bill already tried to get through and they turned it down. These guys are always screaming about how the platform... <laughs> I mean, you can't make this up. You want me to understand... So as far as I know, as far as this Facebook lady is telling us, or Meta, which is you know Facebook and Instagram, these liberals and the, and the block and the NDP are screaming about misinformation, screaming about censorship, and they don't even have a minister that calls them. They don't have regular updates from, they don't have a single clue what's going on with these platforms. They don't have a single clue what is, what, how the platform, <laughs> how these platforms are combating. And when they find something, when the platform finds something, they reach out to the government. Not the other way around. The government doesn't have a minister of let's find out what the heck is going on over there. They got a minister for everything else. Maybe they should stop spending so much money and, and so much time flying around in all their jets and just, you know, get an email address from these tech companies to have a regular rapport before you start telling yourself that we got to censor them. Oh, no, no, no. What are you? That's the government for you right there, right? That's the that's the government that Canadians are living under. Where they don't have any answers. They just know that what they don't want. And they don't want you and I to have our own opinions. I remember when I first started this channel, I have a video. Of course, I, I tried to find it, but it's it, there's a lot of stuff on that hard drive. So I'm still looking for it. But it, basically, the message coming out of, the, out of the far left, even one senator was saying it. They're like, oh, we're not going to ban Canadians' cat videos. We're not going to ban their cat videos because that's all they think the Canadians are good at, right? Making cat videos. Now, here we are um, showing them that we have our own opinions and we got thoughts and we got things that are going on. Not such a cat video now. And so instead of, you know, talking about how they just say, well, they're just saying, no, 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 we need more legislation. We need to, it's ridiculous. 
Thank you for the question. Um, we do, again, regularly brief um, government as well as parliamentarians on our efforts, especially as it relates to foreign interference. Um, you know, with respect to some of our internal teams, our threat analysis group, um, which is a team of experts um, and security analysts who, who regularly are, are both detecting and disrupting um, foreign campaigns, um, they would also be the ones to likely, uh, you know, coordinate and discuss these matters directly with law enforcement. Um, but these have been proactive briefings on our account. Well, so as uh, Ms. Curran had said, you have not received uh, proactive efforts to you from government. It's been you initiating those efforts. Is that correct? We do provide those briefings uh, proactively, yes. Well, thank you. I now, this is the same government that says that they have to get money from these from these organizations because they're having so they're making so much money off the news. And they don't have a single solitary clue what efforts they're taking. They don't have a single solitary clue what, what is actually out there. So how can they know what the threat is if they don't speak to the organizations that are facing these threats every single solitary day? They don't have a clue. You know what they do know? They know that they can't get anybody to listen to them because they have poisoned the mainstream media and it's making them go bananas. That's what it seems like to me. And they just start throwing these names around and hoping that nobody does their research. Well... We know better. Now, you're all probably familiar with tenant media. So R Rachel Dancho asked another question because the liberals are trying to say that, you know, anybody who votes for Pierre Paulia must be a card carrying member of tenant media. We're all getting a cut. We all have shares in their organization and all the rest of that because one of the couple of the people that were in the America, in the United States doing it were from Canada. Um, and then there's been uh, attempts by liberals to make a connection between our party, the Conservative Party, and tenant media. Uh, with your reach, uh, do, are you aware at all if there's any connection between uh, the Conservative Party and tenant media to Ms. Curran? Based on our investigations into tenant media and broader Russian state-controlled media, we do not see evidence that links the Conservative Party of Canada to tenant or RT. I will say we're very careful when we do the investigations to avoid speculating beyond the evidence we can see on our platforms. And our investigations are focused on the behavior we see on our family of apps. And so our investigations, we cab into the things we can observe and the uh, assessments that we can make based on what we see on our platform. Now there's a guy with some media training who basically just said, we don't have any evidence that the conservatives have any contact with tenant media, but honestly, we can only know from our three main uh, family of apps, which I believe Meta is Instagram, oh, Facebook, and WhatsApp, if I'm not mistaken. And they mention Instagram and Facebook in the same breath constantly, like these these individuals. That was the the uh, security specialist from Meta who they brought with them to the to this meeting. They, you know, and he had listed his credentials, how he started with the government, and now he works with uh, Facebook. So it turns out that. When we think about some of the other things that I've talked about, how the um, in this from this very same meeting that the far left is get is the one that causes all of these problems. Remember with the bot farming on uh, X, and they're the one pushing out these stories, but not the conservatives. The conservatives weren't even really following. They don't really know much about the tenant media. And in fact, if the uh, if the press hadn't blown them up, they could have arrested those guys, destroyed that entire company, shut the whole thing down, and they would have never had to tell anybody at all. But, of course, they don't know how to handle that kind of stuff, right? Because they get, you know, they're they're all about the drama, the drama, the drama. So they had to let it out. They had to get the clicks. They had to tell everybody that they knew what they were doing. Really, they gave more free press to um, the Russian media outfit than they, than they could have ever purchased. Okay, so the liberals start their first round, the six-minute round, and the one fella, uh, MP McDonald, I think his name is he he starts asking the question and she passes him off to the security specialist because that seems to be his department. To Mr. McDonald for six minutes, please. Thank you, thank you for being here today. Um, I'll quickly, just, just on Ms. Doncho's recent comments, I wanted to know why that, uh, you know, if there's so much work being done on this, tenant media was only taken down after the U.S. indictment. Maybe Meta could, could speak to that first, please. I'll, I'll turn that over to my colleague, Mr. Agaranovich. I'd be happy to, and, and thank you for the question. At Meta, we, and maybe just to zoom out a bit about how we handle state media entities, 
And then when those state media entities start to bleed into covert influence activity, like what you saw with Tenet. Now, for several years now at Meta, we've labeled state-controlled media entities from 10 different countries. In Russian state-controlled media specifically, we put in place additional measures that restricted Russian state-controlled media after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Those measures included things like not just labeling their pages on our platform, but also putting in what we call interstitial friction. So if someone tries to click on a link, for example, to our Sia Savoyna story, they actually get a pop-up window that says, hey, are you sure you want to go visit that? That's Russian state-controlled media. We also labeled posts Norwich? by any user. Mr. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I yes. have another. I have some more questions, and I want to make sure, sure. that I that I get to them because I don't have much time. Mm -hmm. So earlier today, I went in and I went on to. Well, well, excuse me. Do 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 you want the answer, or do you want to ask your questions? <laughs> I, 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 Mr. Granovich is the expert in, this, in these you, issues. You excuse me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we have a problem, you see. I, I played out the whole clip because I couldn't believe it. I was like, so she, I was, I was, <laughs> I was like, who said that? Right? Like, you know, because I, I often will listen to the, the entire thing, even though I don't cover it because there's so, you can always tell from the first round of questions how far the <laughs> they're going to go into the propaganda. And he asks the question, he doesn't get the answer that he's looking for, and he starts to interrupt him, which can happen. However, the meta lady, the Facebook lady, didn't seem to appreciate it at all. And I was like, who said that? Right? Because I, I didn't think it sounded like uh, MP Dancho. And it turns out that it was the metal. And the second that she says it, I mean, these guys got more microphones in the room than a reality TV show. There are more microphones in there than a, con than a you know, like a Rolling Stones concert. You can't even imagine how many microphones and how much tech they got going on. And right at that second, there happens to be a problem. I, I, in my head, it's like the time when in the uh, German Olympics, when Germany lost that foot race and they, ki they killed the feed <laughs> to the radio. Be like, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe it. And I'll tell you something. If if the conservatives would ever have turned and, and confronted the witness like that, the whole far left in the room would have started calling them names and everything else, right? Every kind of is you can think of. It's funny how there's two sets of standards on the far left and there's only one set on the far right. It's, it's, it's a bit strange in my mind that people don't call them out on that more often. But I think that it was really telling that this woman just piped up because she was in the room he he's remote and she would like the, the the tech guy was remote and she's in the room and she's like hey wait a second do you want to know or are you just going to continue you know do you just want your sound bites it's the way she i interpreted how she said it do you just want to ask your questions and then you can fill them in on your own and they went to a green screen like the the when there's a problem or when they go in camera or something they put this they have this uh, default sort of thumbnail that goes up and it's primarily green because you know it's the commons it, and then when they came back he was already four or five words into a question that he was asking of somebody else and i was like wow this really this really went sour for him really really quickly Okay, this next one was the Block's first round, the six-minute round, and they, of course, refused to speak English. So you just have to put up with the interpreter for the individual's questions, for the MP's questions. The meta lady, uh, she answers it quite well. And, I mean, she rips right into him. He thought he was going to put her on the spot. And there's, a, there's, some, there's some glaring flaws in the logic that I really want to point out. So just... Bear with the interpreter. It's not too bad. There's not too many uh, 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 uh's and stalls and all the rest of that that is typical. But this is the problem with the block, right? They refuse to speak English, no matter how good they are at it. Now he's coming after her about the refusal to pay to pay the government of Canada money so that the government of Canada can dole it out to whichever media company that they choose and somehow in the far left's mind that's not state controlled media and it doesn't make sense to me
I, I think that's incorrect. So listen, I think you're talking about a couple of different issues. The first is removal of news from our platforms. We would love to restore news to Facebook and Instagram. The reason we had to remove it from our platforms is because the current government introduced and passed Bill C-18, the Online News Act, which was going to require us to pay $80 million a year, approximately, for content that had no particular commercial value to us. In fact, we think we provided great value to news publishers. We estimated that in the order of $230 million per year to publishers in distribution value. So publishers in Quebec, we worked with Le Devoir, we worked with La Presse, we worked with publishers in Quebec across the board uh, to distribute their content on Facebook and Instagram and get it to larger audiences. And we think we were very successful in doing that. Now, the current government introduced legislation which gave us no option but to remove news from our platforms <laughs> or we were going to have to pay for it. My <laughs> colleagues at Google are currently still enmeshed with the CRTC in trying to figure out how this scheme is going to work. Scheme. But we would love to restore news to our platforms. We could do that tomorrow if we were scoped out of C-18, the Online News Act, or if the legislation was repealed, or even if publishers were given the option to opt in or opt, opt out to that legislation. We could restore news content to our platforms tomorrow. And look, as a Canadian, I would love to do that. I would love to see Canadian news back on our platforms. I would love to see news from Quebec back on our platforms. We are unable to do that within the legislative framework of C-18. But I think that can be fixed. <laughs> I mean, she just lambasted these guys right they're the ones that wanted to make c18 they're the ones that decided that facebook should be paying money even though facebook just said we feel that we are providing you close to a quarter of a billion dollars in free ad advertising and reach you'd think that we should give you money but in reality we're providing you with a great service and i think what matters to me and you is that the the block guy is not talking about misinformation he's talking about how come the the lady won't let news be put on on the facebook because who's not who's they can't get global they can't get ctv they can't get cbc they can't get all of these companies on the facebook to to make any postings now who controls those the far left controls those. The liberals and the bloc, they control the, those press outlets. So, you know, what he doesn't seem to understand is that he's actually advocating for state-controlled media to be able to influence through Facebook while demanding that she be more accountable for disinformation. It, you can't make this up. I, who votes for these people? Si je comprends bien, Madame Curran. If I understand correctly, Ms. Curran, the problem is that it would cost Meta $80 million or $18 million a year. Is that the price that Meta is placing on democracy and accurate information? No, not at all. In fact, I would argue we still have content on our platform from non-governmental organizations. We still have content from academic oui, institutions. Vous mais we tank. still have content from oui. regular... I apologize for that. I just have a minute left, and I would... I understand your position. I was expecting that answer, but we are dealing with this problem of disinformation from Russian state-controlled authorities, and everyone is concerned here in Canada, but regular people are looking for news, and often it is on social media. I wish it was different, but the, that's the reality. So I think that Meta has a social responsibility, not just Meta, but all other social media organizations as well. 
but you have an important and essential role. Without Mr. Fautin, I agree that we should have news content on our, pl our platforms. We would love to have news content on our platforms, including from news outlets in Quebec. We had private deals worth in excess of $20 million with private news outlets. We would love to have that content back on our platforms. We can't do it within the very restrictive framework that C-18 presents. So if we are scoped out of C-18 or if news outlets are given the option to opt in or opt out of C-18, we would love to put them back on our platforms. We think we have worked with news outlets in Quebec. Uh, we would love to work with them again and we could turn that content on again tomorrow. So there's a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, the reason that Meta doesn't care is because they're not making any money off of them. They're not, right? They're like, it doesn't, he wants to pay you 80 million, but we're not making a penny. We're not earning any money off of your posts. So why would we give you even a nickel? And that should, should that lesson should be brought home to the far left, but they don't seem to get it. Then he says, oh no, we're fighting Russian disinformation. So the reason, the, the, the way that you're trying to fight Russian disinformation is to put Canadian controlled media on Facebook. You're upset because Facebook won't allow CTV, Global, and any of them, CBC especially, to be on the platform because you say that by putting them on the platform, you can control the message. And then he goes, well, I don't like people not even that are going on social media to find out their news, right? Because he wants to craft the message, right? That's the important thing to understand. They want to control what you hear and see. They want to control the news that you digest. And that's what's making them bananas. And this proves it. What I love the most, though, what I think is the greatest um, foot in his own mouth is him saying, so you're not socially responsible enough to think that $80 million is going to defend democracy and that's all your fault. Meanwhile, that same $80 million is stopping you, you're, you put up the legislation, presumably, for that $80 million. And if that $80 million is so much more important to you than democracy, what do you want about it? What? <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? On the one hand, you want $80 million so that they will put news on the platform, and she says, we don't want to pay you $80 million, and you say, oh, you must hate democracy? <laughs> am i the only one who thinks that that's ridiculous if you want democracy to be protected so much then maybe just just tear up c18 and while you're at it tear up c16 because we make more than cat videos right tear up c18 tear up c16 stop trying to censor the internet and start start realizing that people can think for themselves and that the reason that nobody is watching cbc ctv the reason these companies are losing money hand over fist is because your great gigantic experiment didn't work people have the ability to think for themselves people know when people are feeding them a, a line of a, you know BS. People realize that they don't agree with your position. They don't have to yell at you. They don't have to point their finger. They don't have to chase you down. And that's a far left philosophy. On the center, in the center and on the right, they just say, you know what? I don't agree with you. Have a nice day. So obviously when, you, when you're pushing, pushing a message that nobody agrees with, you, when, obviously when you're pushing a message that nobody concurs with, it doesn't matter what platform you put them on or you don't put them on. It's not as if um, you put them on X and they're all of a sudden getting a lot of views. It's not as if you put them on YouTube and they're all of a sudden getting a lot of views. People don't watch these platforms because they don't want to listen to the brainwashing. They don't want to listen to, be, to all of the propaganda that comes out of their, out of the the, the mouths of the anchors. I mean, you had one of the most trusted channels in the history of Canada, the CBC. It had hockey. It had trusted news. It had local news. You trashed it because you just believed that everybody would be following along like, you know, wherever you point, they're going to go like well-trained animals or something. And that's been proven incorrect. And now all you've done is staff the CBC with people who can't, think for themselves who can't adjust with the market and now the market is, is speaking back to them right now the market is saying nope and you're trying to mesh this with russian information who 
if I'm honest with you, probably only uses looks at Canada when they're you know overlooks Canada to try to get to the United States. I mean, there there's a lot. It's a big bad world out there. But the news that you think that you're trying to convince people to watch, nobody wants to watch. That's what you don't want to admit to yourself. And you heard them. I wish that people didn't go on platforms to get news. What a ridiculous statement. He basically wants to just like tell you what to think, what to believe. And if there's anything that disagrees with his position, then he wants to censor that. These are not the people that, these are not leaders. These are, and they're absolutely not democracy. One of the core tenements of democracy is the ability to question power. And they don't like that on the far left. I just think that that metal lady really put him in his place. I think she did a great job. I, I, you know, I don't necessarily concur with Meta and a lot of things. They, I find that there's a lot of censorship of their, of their own that they exhibit. And, you know, that's a different video. I just wanted to show you this one because I, uh, I'm trying to, you know, expand this channel. I'm trying to grow this channel. And people tell me that I need to be more myself instead of just trying to be, deliver the information, just the facts, ma'am. So, I mean, I'm going to probably start to do that. And that's why this video went on a little longer. And that's why this video has a lot more of me being animated in it. I'm not just giving you the facts. I'm giving you my opinion. And my opinion is that the far left is absolutely 100% trying to shut down free speech. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.